Well, um, one difference, there's a couple differences between Manny and I. The first one being I did not play in the NHL, but the big difference being that no one ever told me that I should be playing more. And if you take a good look at me, I don't think anyone's ever told me that I'm a good looking guy. So um, those are some big differences. So um, I'm going to speak today about offensive zone play. Um, this is basically what we've done at Providence College the past couple years with some changes and adjustments that we made this, uh, this frequent year. Um, most of the clips, most of the video will be from Pro Providence College, but um, I'm also going to add some NHL film in there to make sure that we have some good footage. Uh, some stats here, start with the NHL, uh, 10 minutes of every 60 minutes even strength is spent with possession in the offensive zone. So uh, not a lot of time and, and um, need to work to get that time. The other big stat there is about one shot in the house every 10 seconds for even strength play. And that that's a good stat that shows you how hard you have to work in the offensive zone just to get a play to the house. At Providence, um, we, we, one thing that I believe in um, pretty heavily is you have to be well balanced at the end of the year to score. And we, um, we had 38 goals on the power play, we had 36 offensive zone play, and we had 34 on the rush. The later the season goes, the harder it is to score. Uh, the better the teams defend. The more that uh, teams have five guys back, the, the more desperation they play with to defend better. So um, your offensive zone, I think, really has to be humming at the end of the year. And if it is, I think it gives you a, a well-balanced attack and a chance uh, to be productive in the postseason or towards the end. So the, these are kind of our pillars. These are our things that, that we focused on in our offensive zone play. Um, the first one is just simply have an attacking mindset. We get a step, we're going. We, we have any chance to take it to the net, we want to take it to the net. Um, we want to take the game to our opponent's net, and we want guys getting to the net off the puck. Simple, but that's the foundation. That's the pillar, and that's what we're always kind of pushing first and foremost. Our second uh, big pillar would be owning the walls, owning possession. We didn't want to be a one-and-done team. We want to be a team that when, uh, when it takes 20 seconds to generate one chance, we're going to work back, we're going to own the walls, we're going to work that puck um, to wear teams down and, and to work back to get that one chance. Uh, movement, playing as a group of five. Now, some people call it structure. I didn't want to call it structure. I want to call it movement. Um, how are we playing together? How are we spreading teams out, um, creating chaos for them, and, and enabling us to play fast? And... The last two pillars are we wanted every player to be an option. I heard Mike Babcock say at this, um, at this convention like four years ago that he wanted every player on the breakout to be an option. Well, we wanted every player in offensive zone to be an option. So we really wanted our D hunting, looking to get involved, trying to um, always know that they have to work to be an option. And the last, the last big pillar is, is we wanted to wear teams down with their offensive zone play. We, uh, we charted eight second shifts. I'll show you a couple of those at the end of the presentation here, but we want to be a team that we're not just a one and done. We, we want to be puck hounds. We want, to, we want a mentality where, uh, you know, we're tilting the ice against our opponents a little bit here. Okay, so let's start with our, uh, our attacking mindset. Okay, uh, scoring habits are really the first bullet points. I mean, you're good, you know, uh, Manny said it, um, I'm sure other people are going to say you score at the net. We all know you score at the net. So how are our habits around the net? What are we focusing on around the net? The big thing with us is, is if, if we have a puck and we have a step, we want that first step to go to the net. If you have a lane, if you have any type of, uh, any type of space to get to the net, let's get to the net, whether it's a jam, whether it's off the walls, um, before our opponents can get in their structure. Follow all of our shots to the net and finish our plays at the net. Okay, meaning that if, our, if one of our line mates is taking a shot, we're finishing our play to the net, beat our coverage to the net, and we wanted to be great with being physical and second effort around the net and staying on our rebounds.
okay? Scoring habits. Those are all of our scoring habits. Those are little things that we're working on. You know, the things that, that I put in red throughout the presentation, those are the things, those are the kind of the bullet points, the phrases that we were hitting with our guys throughout the years. Those were our go-to phrases. Um, the second thing about our attacking mindset is uh, we believe in, in volume shooting. When we have traffic at the net, let's penetrate by getting the puck to the net, okay? Uh, that includes whips, that includes strong side one-timers by our D, but if, if we have traffic, if we know there's players there, it's not a bad play to penetrate with the puck. Um, it creates un uh, unpredict uh, unpredictable plays for defensemen. It makes them turn, turn their heads, and it really allows you to um, hunt down a lot of retrievals. And the third thing I mentioned in our attacking mentality is getting our defensemen active and hunting. And uh, every player is an option. Okay. So let's, let's look at some clips here. Okay. Uh, starting with our first step to the net. So you see it's a scrum on the wall. Okay. We're in black in this clip in the offensive zone. First step. First step off the wall goes to the net. We attack the net. And then we have an active D there hunting down, okay? But working on that first step throughout our drills, throughout all of our drills throughout the season, making sure we're using those catchphrases and getting the net. Couple clips here, okay? Colorado, first step off the net, attack, penetrate before the opponent is in structure. You see the D hunting down, getting a good rebound here. Calgary, same thing. Pick it off the wall, first step, we're gonna to look to attack. Take it to the net, take the game to the opponent's net. Good habit, good scoring habit, okay? The second aspect of, of our attacking mindset is how we're gonna to get to the net away from the puck, okay? Puck comes up top, okay? And, and what we need to see is we need to see one, two, three guys, and we need to see the second effort. We want to be physical at the net front. If we can bump first, let's bump first. Let's make space for, our, for ourselves and our hands to make plays, okay? Second of all, how's our second effort, okay? I felt in, in the, we lost to uh, David Quinn in, in Boston University in, in 2018 in the Hockey East Championship game. And I felt we lost the game at the net fronts because our forwards stood. They allowed themselves and their hands to be covered. So right from day one in our season, we talked about we want great second effort around the net and our forwards moving. And this puck here, we have one whack, two rebounds by moving, staying on the rebounds, and getting to the net. Okay, being physical at the net front. You see a good one-on-one -on -one battle here at the net front. Okay, we got a, our guys a little bit bigger, but we got to push off right away. Okay, make space for ourselves so we can stay on a rebound and score. Being physical first at the net front. Now, this clip here, a lot going on, but I want you to watch the net front. Okay, a lot going on. We're spreading the zone. All right, we have a guy jamming the play here, but I want you to watch this guy at the net front here, 15 for us. And this is what this is a great clip of, of a difference that we wanted to make in our team of having great second effort around the net. He knows the puck's coming around the net. Our D's hunting down to the dot. We'll talk about that a little bit later, okay? But he's already spinning first to try to get the hands free. He spun first, he's got his hands free there. Stays on the rebound, follows it to the net for a big goal for us, okay? Carolina, okay? Down to the net, establishing position making space, spinning. Now you gotta stay on the rebound. Good scoring habits, okay? Looking for the puck. That's where the goals are scored. Second part, okay? Attacking without the puck. How are we beating guys off the wall, okay? Just like our first step with the puck, we wanna go to the net. Our first step without the puck, we wanna go to the net. Now watch the wall battle here, okay? The wall battle here. All right, R10, first step. Now it's a race off the wall. All right, we're attacking the net with the puck, but our secondary guy is getting to the net and get your ass on your, your defender's hands if you can, okay? That way you take his hands out of the play. When I'm going to the net, 
I get my ass on his hands. That allows my hands to be free. I cut off his lane to the net, okay? Beat a guy off the wall for a goal, okay? Attacking without the puck. Top of the screen here, sprinting, beating guys off the wall, okay? Scoring habits. Big goals, big times. And the last one here, this is obviously a, a really big goal in the playoffs, okay? An overtime, double overtime winner. But Maroon, right from here, he follows the shot to the net. And good scoring habits, the, the goals are scored at the net, okay? But he's following his line mate's shot to the net, or plays in at the net, and they finish at the net. Okay? Now, volume shooting. You can call it volume shooting. Um taking teams maybe out of their structure. But when we have traffic, it's not a bad play to penetrate with the puck. Okay? All right? We have a step. We have traffic. Penetrate with the puck. Create second chances. All into our mindset of attacking with the puck. The second thing about we call these whips Okay, when we're turning it and we're whipping on the net, when we know we have presence at the net, we have good presence. Our F2 is, uh, is feet are above the goal, the goal line, jamming well here. Okay, but what we do here is we catch a team cheating a cycle. Okay, and so the you know the whips keep teams honest. He, this defender here is cheating the cycle. Okay, a good whip, just getting it to the net with traffic. Our F3 is coming down to the net. So strong side one-timers, get it there quickly. Another whip. Great traffic at the net front. Not a bad play. Ugly goals, dirty goals. There's nothing wrong with them. Here's a pretty big whip in the playoffs, what we would call a whip. Another overtime winner. On the net quickly when you have traffic going to the net for a big goal. Okay? Strong side one-timers. This is something like I know... You know, different teams will do different analytics on whether they like the strong, uh, strong side one-timer or the D-to-D -D play. We wanted the strong side uh, one-timer when we had traffic. And this is, this is exactly why. If we can draw, okay, four players up, okay, we have a two-on-one net front here, get it down there quickly. The strong side one-timer, we did a lot of work with our defensemen, both off walls and straight up, getting it down quickly. The strong side one-timer allows you to beat guys to the net, okay? Strong side one-timer, beat your check to the net, cut off his hands. Won in the playoffs, a big goal by Thornton. Strong side one-timer, beat your man to the net, okay? And the last part of our attacking mindset is we wanted our D to be active. And I just want in this first shift, just watch 18 here, okay? Try, try to focus on 18, okay? We wanted our D, we called it swimming. We wanted their feet moving all the time in our offensive zone play. We wanted them uh, in constant motion if they could. That way they're, they're, they're ready to hunt down on pucks, okay? They're active and they're making themselves options as well as they're moving their feet before they get a puck so they're, so they're creating their shot lanes before they get the puck, not when they get the puck, okay? So you watch 18, he's hunting down to the dot. He thinks he's coming weak side but his feet are moving. Now he's created a shot lane before he got the puck. Guy's off the puck trying to get to the net and again swimming, second shot lane created and his partner's down for a third shot, okay? Here, Columbus, spreading the zone, okay? You see eight for Columbus spreading the zone, out of, working to be out of the shot lane, but he's in constant motion. He's swimming, he's out of the shot lane, gets one down for a goal. Okay, working before you get the puck. Second part of hunting, be on your toes, be ready. You have the green light. Our defensemen have the green light to hunt down anytime there's a loose puck. And that's a mentality. That's a defenseman finding our, our F3 there on a loose puck. You 
you see, this is, we, we like to see this, okay? Our weak side D, make the wings, make the opponent wings cover people. They're usually the worst defensive players, okay? If we're hunting down and you see him in this clip, uh, Mike Callahan slapping his stick, wanting the puck, but he's hunting down, he's being aggressive, every player is an option, okay? Squirts out, and we get a second chance there, okay? The mentality that every guy's an option, the mentality that we wanted all of our guys to be aggressive. This is a quick retrieval. Here, weak side D, hunt down, be an option. Two on one, they're inside winger for a good goal, okay? Columbus doing the same thing here in the playoffs. A release to the F3. And that weak side D being active, okay? This clip here. Hunt down, be active. See our D coming down the weak side, opens up the lane for us to center to our forward, okay? Hunt down, one of the plays that we found that was very effective is when the D hunt down the wall, it causes a lot of confusion about who's, who's taking the player. Usually the winger wants to come down, okay? If we're hunting down and you see him in this clip, uh, Mike Callahan slapping his stick, wanting the puck, but he's hunting down, he's being aggressive, every player is an option, okay? Squirts out, and we get a second chance there, okay? The mentality that every guy's an option, the mentality that we wanted all of our guys to be aggressive, this is a quick retrieval. Here, weak side D, hunt down, be an option. Two on one, they're inside winger for a good goal, okay? Columbus doing the same thing here in the playoffs. A release to the F3. And that weak side D being active, okay? This clip here, hunt down, be active. See our D coming down the weak side, opens up the lane for us to center to our forward, okay? Hunt down, one of the plays that we found that was very effective is when the D hunt down the wall, it causes a lot of confusion about who's, who's taking the player. Usually the winger wants to come down and press that, and you can draw a D. So the bump back to your F3, um, when, you're, when you're hunting down, the bump back to your F3 is usually a play that's very open, gives you free hands. You see we have hands at the net here, and we get a puck down to the net. But your D being active, being hunting, really wanting them to force down. Now, this is a great goal from the playoffs with St. Louis, and I think it's just more of a mentality than anything. Play to their F3, and you see the D just activate, be active, and hunt down for a big goal. All right, the second part of our offensive zone is we wanted to, we wanted to keep possession of the puck, okay? So we wanted to own, the, own, the, own all the walls. If there's 20 seconds, Okay, if it takes 20 seconds to create a chance, all right, we better be good and not be in one and done. We gotta retrieve those pucks, we gotta be great. These were the things that, that we hit on with our guys. Now, the map is a heat map. That's touches in the offensive zone without shots. So you see where the game's played. The game's played on the wall. How do we get from the wall to the house? How do we create a chance in better than 20 seconds? Well, we gotta own the walls and we gotta control that possession. The things we worked on, owning the lanes, okay? Trying to stay off the wall. A lot of times we get guys in college, the first thing they do is they put themselves on the wall all the time. Okay, instead of staying three, four feet off the wall, okay, they put themselves on the wall. They allow themselves to get pinned or for contact right into the wall and we're one and done, okay? The second, the, the other big things here, okay, is moving our feet, first touch and we tried to work a lot this year on getting our, play, our players comfortable at making plays when their backs toward the play. And that's tough, okay? A lot of players, I thought when, we, when we're developing guys, a lot of players aren't real good at making plays with their back to the play. Now check out the time on this clip, 32 seconds. This is a Carolina goal, okay? And it hits every one of those little details that we worked on throughout the season about being great on the walls, okay? and 20 seconds. They have 20 seconds of wall work here
to get to a chant. Okay? Starts with the release, handling the release here. Now he's got to own the lane to the puck. Okay? Your body owning that lane to the puck. A release back low again. Now, moving your feet, first touch. Trying to get out of the corners as quickly as you can. Moving your feet, first touch. Okay, staying off the wall with the second guy in a good eye formation there. Staying off the wall. And here's a big one. Okay, off the cutback, a self bank. Not allowing your hands to get tied up and letting your hands do all the work on your cutbacks. Using the yellow, all right, clipping it back. 20 seconds of work to a shot, to a net front battle, to a goal. So owning those walls, it starts with owning the lanes. It's a good clip of two guys battling. Get your body involved. Own the lane to that puck. And try to get moving. First step to the net. Another good clip, okay, here of trying to get your guys to stay off the wall. This is even a little tight to the wall. I'd rather he be here, give himself room to move, to skate into things. But this is one of the big things that we find in college is that the guys will put themselves here, put themselves on the wall. Keep yourself off the wall, okay, so you have space to skate into things. Good cutback, good on the yellow here. Let's get out of the corners as quick as we can. So owning the walls. Now, one thing that we did this year is we started every one of our Ford's individual skill drills with the rim. Because we wanted, we wanted to pick up, we, or we wanted our guys to pick up plays off the wall. We want to improve their hands. We want to get them used to winning those walls. So, you know, when we would do our Ford D splits or even warm up drills with our Ford's, everything started with the rim. There's a good clip of just a player getting comfortable, and the good players can do this of making plays with their back towards the play. Good escape out of the corner, some good movement, okay? Now, playing as a group of five, our movement within, you know, what you would call structure, but how are we reading off of each other? Um, and this is where I think every team's a little bit different. We started quick in a triangle. We wanted to start um, right away knowing that we're in a triangle quickly, and we want our F1 to try to get out of the corners, all right? Get out of jail. Make sure that we're moving pucks. We want to spread the ice. And, and by spreading the ice, meaning how can we get three guys high, how can we draw them high, and how can we cause confusion between defensive zone coverages? And what I mean by that is, like, a lot of, a lot of teams will play a zone low, but the puck comes up high, it comes back to man on man. Well, that puck comes back low, and then you're, you're causing confusion. Are they back into the zone? Are they back into the man on man? Okay? So we want to try to cause that confusion. And then uh, every player being an option. This is some of our movement, okay? Our F1, <laughs> we call our player with the, with the <coughs> F1. We want him to get out of the corner as quickly as he can, either with the feet or release to the back of the net, okay? Our F2, one foot above the goal line, okay? One foot above the goal line, we're in a position to jam the net. We're also in a position to keep our feet moving on any retrieval. Okay, we wanted a lot of our cycles to go to the weak side. Instead of coming back strong side, we wanted things to go weak side. When we did go weak side, our weak side D would activate to the dot. Okay, why the dot? We wanted to play fast. We want our forward to know where our D is going to be on any weak side cycle. So he didn't have to pick his head up. He knew the D was going to be on that dot. Okay, the, uh, a couple other things, and this was a change. We weren't a high tip team. We weren't, a, we weren't a position, we didn't want our F3 to stay at a high tip position. We wanted movement between our F3. So anything that's coming high, we wanted our F3 coming down to the net, okay? We wanted to cause more traffic, we wanted movement, okay? If he got down to the net, our jam man could come off the net and create a little cycle, a little movement between those two guys in that area there. Defenseman movement, we had uh, some terminology, okay? If our F1 rolled up the wall with the puck, okay? Spread meant, uh, meant they were spreading across the ice. Roll meant they were rolling behind. 
and a strong side D would be diving through, keeping his momentum, coming back here. Those were our three big reads with our D when the puck cycled up the wall. Now, all of our reads were by our strong side D. It was our weak side D had to read off of our strong side D. That was, that was our signal. Um, we started the season in having a, a, you know, a rule that let F1 get to the hash marks before we do anything. But we didn't like that. So we got away from that. We started just saying, hey, if, if you guys play the game, you read, okay? If F1 starts coming, you guys can go at any time, all right? Some clips, quick triangles, okay? Here, a low play, this would, this would be our F1, our F2 is jamming the net, quick triangle, okay? Now, play to the net, we can play fast, we know where our teammates are, retrieval, good lane to the puck here by 15, but you see we get right back in our triangle formation right away. Okay, so we can play fast. Our guys are working to get to spots and allow us to get out of the corners. Quick play, low. You see our F3 getting to, the, to his triangle right away. Good knee bend, good low hips, good low stick, good goal. The last clip, okay, Dallas. Very similar clip. Working low, getting to their triangle, and a good quick goal. So everything started with us in our triangle, okay? Now, how do, these, these are some of the movements out of the triangle or out of our F1. The first thing, okay, we had to work out of the corners. You see, we're in a quick triangle here, good release to the back of the net. Our weak side D is hunting the dot. It's not on. He gets back, okay? But how fast are we getting out of the corners, owning the walls? Okay, good chip low, get out of the corners, get it down to the net. Little F3, F1 cycle, and a good play on the net, okay? Here's a, a scissors movement, okay? Our F1's coming up the wall. Again, we wanted our F3 moving, okay? So you see our F3 coming down. We didn't want him stationary. We wanted him working on coming down to the net. Our F2 is jamming the net. Okay, our F2 makes a read to try to get to the back door here to create space. Our D are spreading, and you see how open the ice is around the net front. Okay. St. Louis, okay, comes up top, their F3 to the far dot. Okay, read to the far dot, but again, movement between that F3 and that F2, and you'll see in this clip, He's popping off the net, F3's coming down to the net for a pretty big goal. But creating some movement there, we, you know, for us, we were unsuccessful with the high tip. We wanted to create this, this similar movement that uh, St. Louis had for a big goal in the playoffs. F2 out, F3 down, pretty big goal, okay? Now, spreading the ice, trying to get three guys high when we can't attack right away Let's wear them down. Let's try to attack three high. And this is a clip here, okay, of what you want to get out of. Five guys defending in a quadrant here, all right, and you're playing three on five down low. So you got to get out of these situations, spread the ice, create some room around the net. Okay, this is a, this is a clip from Columbus spreading the ice against Tampa. They bring their F3 high on the support. Their F1's going to the net. You can have your F1 come high and support the D to D. Okay, they, they pop out their F3, but look at the space around the net. Puck comes from high to low. Now you're causing that confusion. We were in a zone. We're in man to man. The puck went up top. The puck comes back low. Now what are we in? Work it back low, spread it out again. Beat men off the puck. Look at the space around the net. Okay. Chip release low. Okay. Now, just watching this clip, this is our F2, this is our F3. If you watch, there's an interchange there between these two guys. This is our goal scorer here. 
Okay? But us spreading the zone, we get three guys high, a roll by our D, we get a puck to the net, and a big goal. Again, bring it high. We got four guys chasing in this clip high. Spread the ice. Force that man-on-man -man coverage to give you space around that net. Here's a good goal by Carolina. A release to the back of the net. Own the walls. Get it up top. And now the second effort around the net. But you see all the space around the net by drawing three guys high, spreading the ice. Okay? Some defensive uh, movement, okay? This would be a spread, and it's all predicated by this strong side D reading off our F1. We call this a spread. We're spreading, we're spreading. Our weak side D is activated. Every man, we wanted every man to be involved, every man to be an option, okay? Here's a roll. And you see again, we spread the ice. We get four guys high, and I love how this clip ends of our hunger around the net. Finishing our plays around the net, good scoring habits. And this is a dive. This is St. Louis with the dive. We did not use the dive much, okay? Meaning this strong side D, this is an inside scissors here. Strong side D is coming down to create some movement, create some chaos, all right? Spread the ice and force teams into man-on-man -man situations, okay? The last clip of our D that I'll show you is that anything that went weak side, I talked about a little earlier, anything that went weak side, we wanted this D coming right to the dot. So when we're coming around the net, we know where to find you. You know, we're able to play fast. We're able to know where that play's coming from. We got, we got five of our opponents watching the puck right now. Wheel the net and a good goal. Dallas executing something very similar. And the last thing I want to show you is that we didn't do a lot of D to D. But when we did go D to D, what we emphasized with our D all year is it has to be one touch. It's got to be one touch to your partner all the time. You know, most teams now, when that puck comes there, this guy's already flying at you. This guy, they, they, they sprint up. Idle back, sprint up, idle back. They're coming at you hard. So your feet gotta be moving, you gotta be swimming, and this has to be one touch, okay, if you're gonna have any success. One little other detail here is that on pass-ups, okay, you saw Columbus pop their third guy. We, on pass-ups, we wanted our F1 supporting. You'll watch him at the end of the clip. Um, beat, beat his man to the net for a whack. One touch across to try to get the lane. and beat your man to the net. Last, uh, last part of our offensive zone is that we wanted to be, build a mentality that we were wearing teams down. Um, so we charted eight second shifts this year. An eight second shift, meaning that we had possession of the puck eight seconds in the old zone. We charted it for lines. We charted it, uh, we gave it to the guys after the games. Um, the next morning, and we ended up putting this part of our game objectives to try to hit a certain number. Um, eight second shifts, cause lines changes, draw penalties, and, uh, and most importantly in the second period, really wear teams down. Last two clips I have for you are two eight second shifts, and this is what we were trying to get at, our mentality okay, of our offensive zone play of being successful. A play down low, great hunt. Okay, we're retrieving, good low stick to break up the play, finish the hit. We hunt it back down. Now we're trying to get moving and rolling. We get a play to the net, but it doesn't end there. A rebound on the net. Now we got to hunt it down. Good low stick again, okay, to break up the play. Three black players there on the puck. That's our mentality, hunt it back down. Retrieve, release, attack. Retrieve, release, attack. Not eight seconds because we want to stand on the outside and be on the perimeter. Eight seconds, 
of retrieve, release, attack, get back on them, and be and uh, and wear teams down, force them to chip pucks out, force teams to take penalties, and force teams with a long change in the second period. So that's all I got. Uh, I'm out of time. Thank you very much. I'll be around with, for any questions later if, uh, if you'd like.